A bipartisan tax bill easily passed both chambers last year, but was never signed into law due to a $100 million wording error. Governor Dayton welcomed the 17th session by proposing new bonding and tax bills. Joining me in the studio is Department of Revenue Commissioner Cynthia Bowerly. Welcome. Thank you for having me. The cost of the governor's tax proposal is $300 million. Are the tax reductions that he's proposed permanent, and if so, can the state afford it? Yes, the governor has always been focused on maintaining the budget stability, and so of course whenever we're looking at tax relief, those are ongoing costs to the state, if you will. And so this bill does provide over $300 million in tax relief and in aids to local governments to provide essential services. Uh, and those costs are then netted against some of the revenue raised that by closing some of the loopholes. And so the total cost of the bill for the biennium is about $185 million. And those tax relief provisions are are ongoing. Uh, they uh, would continue into future years. We are just looking at these two biennial uh sets of numbers at this point in time, given where we are in the budget. Uh, but they would be continuing tax relief for Minnesota families. Well, and you mentioned it already that the governor's devoted to maintaining a, a sound budget. And he said that this bill provides, quote, provides assistance to those who need it most while protecting the progress we have made to stabilize our state's finances. In the governor's view, who needs this tax relief? Mm -hmm. The governor has focused his tax bills, uh, tax bill and the pr relief provisions in it on Minnesota families. So uh, the centerpiece of the bill are a couple of provisions that help families uh, put more money in their pockets so they have more money to spend on their needs. For example, the working family credit is going to help a lot of families in Minnesota, uh, families with incomes up to $48,000 uh, receive a refundable tax credit. And across Minnesota, you know, that's right in the range of the median income for some of our counties in Minnesota. So many families across the state will be able to take advantage of this. In fact, almost 100,000 more families in Minnesota will be able to take this credit. The second piece that's really focused at families is the child independent care credit. This is a credit that exists in Minnesota to help families pay for important child services, the child which can care. Which very expensive. Which very expensive yeah. in Minnesota, some of the most expensive in the country. And so recognizing that this is a cost that families, of course, want to pay for to make sure their children are safe as they go to work uh, and are well cared for, are in a great early learning kind of environment, uh, this is a tax credit that helps those families. Uh, that targets a little more middle class families, so incomes up to starting at 100, sorry, starting at 77,000, that credit will start to phase out. So again, expanding this credit to 95,000 more Minnesota families uh, than already take it so that we can help families uh, pay for important uh, things like childcare. Governor Dayton talks about eliminating loopholes and tax avoidance strategies in an effort to level the playing field. So how does that work? Yeah, so the tax code in Minnesota provides certain uh, certain tax treatment uh, for businesses across the state in very many different industries. And what we have noticed at the department over time is that there tend to grow loopholes. So someone will figure out a way to avoid paying taxes uh, even though they are engaged in a similar business. Uh, and the largest piece in this set of loopholes that we are proposing to close relates to foreign source income. So in Minnesota, when that income from a company who has foreign income that they're bringing back on shore um, at the federal level, that is treated as taxable income. Here in Minnesota, that's given a little bit more of a preferential treatment through a dividend. And so what we're proposing in this uh, provision is to align Minnesota's tax treatment of that foreign source income with what happens at the federal level. Okay, um, and then by eliminating loopholes, like the one you just mentioned, um, does Minnesota risk losing businesses to other states that are perhaps viewed as being friendlier? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of conversation about business climate here in Minnesota. One of the things that we know is that our workforce is the biggest asset that we have for businesses here in Minnesota. They depend upon our workforce, and one of the things we need to do is make sure our businesses continue to have a great workforce. And certainly we know that tax treatment uh, is important to businesses as well. These loopholes affect a very small number of companies, uh, and what we're really trying to do is level the playing field for those other businesses who are fully complying with Minnesota's tax Tax laws. Okay. Um, 
water quality has been a priority of the governor's. He's talked about it on many occasions. Can you describe how his proposal will help farmers comply with the buffer strip um, requirements? Right. Well, there's two provisions in his tax bill that address the, the new buffer program. One is for farmers who are going to be taking uh, what they would otherwise have as tillable acreage out of production. And so there is a payment to them of about $40 per acre to help them with that transition. We know they're going to be taking land out of production, and so this is to help them with that. The other is uh, aid to those local soil and water conservation districts and counties who will be helping farmers implement that. They're going to have some additional costs with this program, and so we want to make that a smooth transition for them and help support the work that there is going to be happening at that local level. And so what other um, initiatives are, would be directed towards farmers? So we, there's also a provision uh, that uh, helps farmers pay for the part of their property tax that is focused on the referenda that get passed at the local level to help with school buildings. And that's been talked about quite a lot lately. It has been. It was in the, it was in the 2016 tax bill. It has been a bipartisan effort, uh, and the governor is happy to support it to show, to help farmers, particularly at this time when commodity prices are very low, mm -hmm. with their tax bills. Um, and again, we want to make sure that students in Minnesota have world-class facilities, uh, and schools today need more technology. You know, uh, labs now have 3D printers and machining tools so students can learn great skills to go into the workforce. Those, of course, uh, capital those capital buildings uh, costs are high. And what we don't want to have happen is that the communities get divided between farmers and those who live in town because of this uh, issue. So this provides farmers with 40% credit on their tax bill for that portion of the referenda levy for school buildings. And finally, uh, conforming Minnesota's tax code to the federal code um, has already passed the House, mm -hmm. and it seems the prognosis is good. So if it, it passes the Senate as well, what does that mean for Minnesota? And the governor signs it, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, we have uh, encouraged both houses to move this bill quickly because we are opening tax filing season on January 23rd. That is the same day as the IRS, and it's really important for Minnesotans to be able to go ahead and file uh, both at the same time. And many people don't think about taxes until April, but many people do file early, particularly if they've got credits coming. We're excited that the House passed the bill last week. We will be in the Senate Tax Committee tomorrow, Wednesday, and hopefully uh, we'll be moving off the floor on Thursday. And so we will be able to make those changes. It will make filing season much smoother for Minnesotans if the Senate can act this week. Commissioner Bowerly, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me.